The first thing I want to ask you is, I was watching you very closely on the runway at the Olympic trials. I want to take you back to Eugene, because mm. I'm not certain that you had really thrown for real in the javelin. I was watching you, and it seemed like you took an inordinately large amount of time, and I was so concerned about what was going through your head at that moment in the trials. And your reaction off a throw that wasn't great as far as distance is concerned, no. but that euphoria. Tell, tell us about that moment when you let that first javelin fly at the trials. That was the, the kind of ultimate moment of faith for me. The, the whole season was kind of summed up in that first time on the runway, and it was this is it, this is make or break. All the work that I've done up to, up until this point is, is all going to come down to this one throw. We had no idea how far it was going to go. We kind of knew uh, how far it needed to go for me to make the team and get the Olympic A standard. and and kind of punched my ticket and it, we thought that that was pretty far you know we thought that maybe it would happen and standing at the back of the runway there's so many thoughts going in the back of your head just I, I just took the probably the deepest breath I've ever took lowered my shoulders and just just gave it up and said you know what if it happens it happens I'm gonna do my part and I'm just gonna throw it as best I can and it as soon as I saw it land it was just like the weight of the world was taken off my shoulders and nothing bad happened Nothing bad happened, but we didn't know that nothing bad happened because my elbow still stretched out a little bit. It still kind of gave me some feedback and hurt a little bit. So as soon as I got my, the tape off of my elbow, we went back. I had my trainers look at it. We did some tests, and it was like, you know, everything still feels good. And then it was kind of like, okay, there we go. Nothing bad happened. Trey, along those lines, in the time from March on when you were training after this Texas Relays, had you not tested the arm or had you tested it in a moderate way and not really flung the, disc, uh, the discus? Well, the discus could put some torque in there too, too. but the javelin uh, you hadn't really exerted it hard and this was the first real effort at the trials you guys decided to let it fly that was the first time I'd thrown it as hard as I could now we had I had done thousands of repetitions at you know 30 percent effort throwing a, a little weighted ball 20 feet 30 feet 40 feet I could throw a baseball really far but a baseball is not a not a javelin it doesn't put the torque on it uh, like a javelin does I hadn't taken an approach with a javelin in my hand like a competition approach um, fortunately for us, though, I could throw the discus as hard as I wanted to. I could throw the shot as far and as hard as I wanted to. And those two events for me at the trials were great events. So leading into the javelin, I had a lot of confidence in my elbow, in my shoulder, in my body, and, and having the ability to kind of withstand a, a full effort throw. And to, to its credit, it wasn't a, you know, forget all the pain and suffering and go out there and throw it and try to hurt your elbow kind of, kind of throw. It was very guarded, very kind of calculated how far and how hard I wanted to throw it. Now, noted surgeon James Andrews down in Alabama, who mm -hmm. pioneered uh, this uh, Tommy John surgery, worked on you mm -hmm. and operated on you. Correct. Now, he's done this with countless other ball players who are ostensibly in shape, let's say. And you came back faster than anybody, is that correct? To my knowledge, that's it. You know, and, and, it, and my surgery and my event is a little bit different than what Dr. Andrews usually performs. So Drew Brees' recovery took a little bit longer than some because he's going to throw a high volume of, of as hard as he can. Uh, pitchers are a little bit different. They're really more of an endurance uh, mechanic and more of a, a chronic fatigue situation. I needed to be able to throw one time. Very hard. As hard as I could one time. And we got to within, I mean, we were operating at 98% of my personal best at the end of the year, which was 10 and a half months after surgery. And I, you know, I'll, to the day I die, I know that no one's done as much rehab as I did in those ten and a half months. You know, it was three, four, or five times a day, seven days a week. I I lived up here. Which leads me to my my question, and the point was, what did Andrews tell you about the quality of your rehab and how fast you recovered, and what did he attribute it to? You know, he's I think different than most surgeons, where as soon as you get out of surgery, he 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 walks you through it like everyone else does. He tells you the notes, he gives you the notes, he sh shows you what he did. Uh, he meets you the next day for rehab. He meets you uh, until you leave town just to kind of let you know what all happened. But the, the day I left Birmingham to come back to Austin, he gave me a cell phone number and said, do you ever need anything? You call me. You text me. You do whatever you need to do to get in touch with me. If I'm in surgery, I'll get back to you as soon as I'm done. And to the, to the text, to the phone call, he returned every single one with every single question I had. And he knew what we were getting ready for. Even before I stepped foot into the hospital, uh, talking with him on the phone, he's like, hey, we got to get you ready. Get in as soon as you can. We got to get you ready for London. You're going to make the team. You're going to throw far, but the sooner the better. And so he was on the same page that I was on. So anytime we needed to kind of push my training and push things, he would ask me certain things, like if, if I were capable of certain benchmarks. And if I said yes, he'd say, go right ahead. If I said no, he'd say, maybe wait a little bit. So there was open and constant communication between him and myself 
throughout the entire year. Um, and I think that really attributed to my, my confidence in what I was doing and my training. And, and I think he was kind of astonished with kind of my benchmarks and how quickly I got there, you know, because I was, I was pushing it pretty hard. Which is a decathlete's dedication, right? I think so. A little bit of that. A little bit of, you know, obsessive compulsive uh, competitiveness. <laughs> but I, I think that really helped me. Talk a little bit about the Texas Relays and what they've meant to you over the years. I mean, you've always performed well here. It's been an, an event that you've focused on. It really is placed well in the season for you because it's early enough that you can kind of test where you are with your training, but you know that you're not sharp yet and don't want to be sharp yet. That, that's exactly right. This is the, the kickoff for my season. It's a long year. I've got to be ready to go and primed up in August. And so for myself, this is just the best place in the world to possibly open up. This isn't a low-key you know, 10 people in the crowd kind of meet. I'm going to be lacing them up on, on Saturday in front of tens of thousands of people, and um, I get a little bit of extra energy. And so for me, I always come out and perform really well, and that's the best way you can absolutely start your season. It's always on a good note. Uh, but like you said, we're not sharp yet. We're really strong. Fitness is great. But we this is the kind of kickoff event uh, to get me in race shape. You know, you're twice a world champion. You're trying to go for a third one. You have an automatic bid in there, so you go to the trials and really just sort of see where you are in June as opposed to August. Right. But let's talk about the elephant in the room. Ashton Eaton, the world record holder, the Olympic champion. Mm -hmm. This has got to be a great rivalry with the two of you. And now with some of the pressure off with you knowing the elbow is going to work, right. what do you need to do to up your game to win a third consecutive title? I, th I don't think I need to up my game so much as I just need to bring my game. I think my game, you know, the last several seasons has been the confidence that I have in my training. And last season, I mean, I, I don't know what the point differential was in London, but I'm pretty sure Tommy John accounts for three to 400 points in a yeah. decathlon. Sure. So for me, I thought that last year would have been that cumulative year in my career where everything should have come together. I got dealt the hand I was dealt, and I, I played it out, and I walked away with a silver medal. So this year for me, it's all about – you know, the confidence I'm going to have from actually getting to train in the fall, in the winter, through the spring with my elbow, getting the throws in that I need to throw, lifting the weights that I need to lift, and uh, actually getting to sprint. You know, you'd be surprised how much Tommy John surgery affects my sprints. So, uh, and, and uh, back to what you said, I don't think it's a rivalry at all. I don't think he sees me as a rival. I don't see him as a rival. I think for the both of us, we're Americans asserting our dominance on the world. I think the U.S., to, we could go one and two for the next four years if we wanted to. If we wanted to make it happen, I really think we could do that. And that's going to be something special. And I think both of us realize how special that would be versus one of us attacking the other or trying to create a rivalry where there really isn't one. You know, for our audience, we should include here the last time two Americans went one, two in the world goes back to the early 1950s. As a matter of fact, it's 1953. So it's that hard an accomplishment to achieve. Okay. If you could pick two or three events, when you look at your whole retinue of what you do, tell us what you've been working on to try and get better. If you think you have two or three events that you're kind of weaker on, everybody can improve in everything, but you no doubt have time to think what is best for me and what are you going to be better at this year? Uh, let's see. I think this year, because we could put in the volume, all of my throws will be a lot better. I think all my throws, there's not going to be any tentativeness. Um, there's going to be, uh, you know, a lot more power behind a lot of my throws. Uh, the other one is pole vault. I came out of the gates this year with a, de a, de a, de a concerted effort and more of a, a determination to be better in the pole vault. It's been too long since I've been that potential that could jump high in the, in the vault, and I'm really excited to jump here at the relays. I've had two good meets indoors where I've jumped well. And uh, the other one is, is my long sprints. I think my 400 it hasn't been what it's been uh, as of late because of little knick-knack injuries and things like that. And so I think th this year is the year for my, my 400, and, and the 1500 should tow right along with it. Are you essentially fit and healthy now? I mean, healthy particularly? 100% for the first time in several years. Yeah, that's unusual. I've always said that if you're in multi-event, you need to be in love with not being 100% because you've always got something going on. That, that, that's part of being a decathlete is, is understanding that you're never going to feel great, but no one else feels great either. Right, yeah. exactly. Well, listen, I can't help uh, thank you enough for you coming up here and joining us. Good luck in the relays. Are you going to do all three events that you have entered? That's the plan. We're going to wake up tomorrow and kind of see how we feel for the discus. Uh, 
if if it if it feels good, we warm up good. We're going to do it. Uh, if it doesn't feel that great, we're going to save it for the pole vault. Okay. Now, Excellent. let me ask you one more question on that. If you decide if it doesn't feel good, are you talking about your arm, or what are you talking about as far as throwing tomorrow? Just overall, like it's it's not important right now. Uh, throwing today doesn't determine how August goes. Everything's pointing to that to those dates in in Moscow for the World Championships, um, and so we really let my body dictate. Uh, how we perform, where we perform, and what we perform. All but right. the arm has been fine. Oh, overall. it's been great. I've, I've PR'd in everything you can PR with uh, in the weight room, so the strength, the functionality, everything's there.